that's how I feel. I feel like every single aspect of your development, whether it's it's good, and let me put those in quotes, good yeah. or bad, <laughs> has contribution to who you are. Welcome to McGraw Some Sauce, the podcast all about entrepreneurial journeys and growth mindset. My guest today is Juma Bannister. Juma is the co-founder and creative director of Relate Studios, a relationship-led strategic marketing company where he oversees the creative and strategic direction of the business. Uh, Juma has traveled throughout the Caribbean training content creators and was one of the six people to receive the Caribbean Tech Innovators Award in 2013 for his contribution in the area of digital photography training. And I know all about his digital photography because I found him on LinkedIn and his videos stand out amongst a sea of other people. So I know his branding is great. Currently, Juma is focused on content marketing and the development of video content, which gives useful instruction, shows how to's and answers questions about video strategy and content creation. And among his biggest achievements is his being a husband and a father. So thank you so much for being with me today, man. I really appreciate you coming onto the show and sharing your insights. Great to be here, Nick. Great, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you, man. Um, so uh, you, obviously, I found you through LinkedIn. Um, you definitely showed up on my radar. Your video, your video content is among the slickest and the most noticeable uh, that I've ever seen on the platform. I don't think enough people are using video content, especially not in the way you're doing it. And I know that's mm -hmm. a big, big crux of your brand. So even though I just introduced you, I would love you to tell me a little bit more about yourself and the work that you do. Well, um, I am from Trinidad and Tobago, which is one of the most southerly islands of the Caribbean. Um, and I've been doing content creation for a very long time now, even I would say even before uh, Google was a thing and Facebook was a thing and social media was a thing because content essentially is in, uh, communicating information in uh, using media. And I was into that, into graphic design, into, into print, and I'm a trained uh, print press operator. I was trained in Ooh. print. So my history is typography and, and typesetting and lithography and all those different things. So I come from that background. I was the guy developing film by hand in the dark room. And, um, and yeah, and, and I think that having that experience and that background has really helped me with content creation right now, because visually, I am very, very attuned. I can see things in a particular way. And that's why my videos have to have a particular aesthetic. It has to look a particular way because I'm very concerned about how things communicate and how I present myself and present the information that I have to give to people and really to make it useful at the end of the day. So I think that's part of me that people don't usually get to see or know about. Yeah, I, I, I myself, and like I said, I'm a professed fan and I didn't know that about that you had that you had a, a print background. And I think that's, I love that, that you have that. Cause that means we have even more in common now because oh. my education is all based in that as well. Uh, even though I went to school for like digital illustration, obviously we have to know print processes and stuff like that. And I may not yeah. have the mountains of experience you have working as a, as like press operator and all that, but you know, people, people see the work that I do. And I always show them like a behind the scenes of me drawing out logos and branding. And they're like, Oh, I thought it was all digital. I didn't know you could draw. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a useful thing to have. Um, so I'm so glad I, I, I know that about you now. Um, yeah. And this kind of leads me into like the bigger question of, of why we're talking today, which is why did you become the entrepreneur that you are today? Like why was entrepreneurship right for you? For a long time, I thought it wasn't. For a long time, I thought I thought that I would be a very good employee, and mm. I was very satisfied for a long time with being a very good employee. Um, I'm the type of person if I get behind a vision, I can I can very much dig my hands in, dig my heels in, and work and produce the thing that someone wants. And I, little did I know that I was building the characteristics that would allow me to become a good entrepreneur and leader. Because when I hold on to something that someone has, I can come alongside and help them build that thing. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that through a series of events and through a series of, of uh, like I was on the last, <laughs> I was at a startup once and that didn't go as, as we thought it would. And I went back into the world of work and then I had a job. And inside of my last job before I started my business, 
um, I just had the feeling that I needed to to leave and um, and start something on my own. And while in that process of figuring that out, my old boss was encouraging me to do that. And it's interesting because the thing that I thought I would be doing, which is design, graphic design, is not what I'm doing now. And I discovered photography while I was working at that last uh, business that I was employed at. Mm -hmm. And uh, I developed that skill of photography. And then I transitioned over into that full time. And I think sometimes the thing, the, the thing for me with entrepreneurship is that I didn't really expect to be expect to be doing it at all, at all. It was never a dream of mine. But if I look back and I track, I can see points at which it was uh, my life was indicating that I would go into business. So then, in ret- if I take everything in total in retrospect, uh, it means to me that it was supposed to happen. And right. so when I when I started off full time in two thousand eight, left my job, started off full time in two thousand eight. It kind of made complete sense, not at that time, but some years later that I would be an entrepreneur. Oh, so this has been all sort of a, you've, you've had quite the journey then, man. This is, this is going on at least like 15 years now. Yeah. It's been going on for a bit and, um, yeah. and I'm just discovering some new things every, you know, every day I discover new things. It's, 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 yeah. it's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you said that it's a journey because the top entrepreneurial minds that I'm seeing around in our, I guess, in our cyberspace, um, they're all saying the same thing. You know, the ones, the ones that we're using as we may not be throwing money at them and we not, may not be paying them for their mentorship and their coaching and all that, but the ones who are like the higher thinkers, they're all saying, enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey. Yeah. Every, not every day will be perfect sunshine and rainbows and, uh, and not every day is going to be, you know, uh, amazing wins and you're just going to be raking in money and you're just going to be closing all these things. Someday you'll have highs and lows, but um, you know, you're, you're living proof that, you know, you're, you're enjoying the journey and it has been a journey, right? Absolutely. 100%. And, and let me quote one of my good friends. Um, he's a songwriter and he said something that was really profound. He said, it's the power of the journey that has forged us and made us strong. Mm. And, um, and, and, and that's how I feel. I feel like every single aspect of your development, whether it's, it's good, and let me put those in quotes, good yeah. or bad, yeah. has contribution to who you are. And you learn things yeah. and, you, and you develop. If you discount those things, if you discount the valleys and only look at the mountains, then you wouldn't get the totality of who you're supposed to become. And that's mm. very important for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the highs balanced against the lows. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think this this sort of leads nicely into my next question. Um, and I'm starting to get to know you a little bit more. What would you say, because this is sort of like a values-based question, like what are your values? What yeah. would you say is the main driving force in your business? Or it could be your online brand. Like, it, like mm-hmm. I don't know much about the business that you do day to day. I know more about your brand online, especially on LinkedIn right. with video. What would you say is the main driving force of your business it could be outright money and success it could be helping Mm -hmm. others it could be changing the world what would you say from a values point of view what is the driving force of what you do that's an excellent question and that's a question i ask people all the time for me here's here's what i want to do here's my thing that i i feel motivated by every day there, there are particular people who come to the company who want to build their lives. They want to have families. They want to have stability. They want to be able to um, just put their kids in school and, and do really human things. Yeah, And live. for me, be, be, they want to live. They want to live and live without struggle and, and live with some level of stability. And for me, my business is a place that, that gives stability and gives sanctuary to people. So that when they come to work for us and they they come inside of our, our space, that they can have the opportunities to to build their family and build their life outside of that. So we provide them with fulfilling work. We provide them with financial compensa- compensation, but it allows them the space to build their families, build their lives. And for me, that is a big marker for success. How can the business that we run impact the the lives of the people who come work for us and who work with us? Does it provide them a space to um, get the things that they need, get the things that they want, live a fulfilling life? I mean, you could add to that some luxury things like going on vacation and, and having fun with your family in different places. 
but how can we contribute to fulfilling the lives of others? And for me, that's a big marker for success. Is that, would you say, anyone who wants to come work for you or be part of Relate, is that one of the sort of the cornerstone questions you might ask or, or, or dig a little deeper in your life? Like what, what, would, what would be a meaningful life for you? Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's one of the main things that we we kind of it's it's not an an interview question, but in terms of t discussing the values of really that's something that we bring up. Mm -hmm. um, we ask like you know what's what motivates you? What 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 are the things you want to to accomplish in life? And let's not talk about your career. Let's just talk about your general um, mm -hmm. like for family and your personal development and what are those things that you want to accomplish so on one side of it because i believe that life is a set of different streams that come together and at different times you have different emphases you one time of the day you will have the kids one time of the day you will have to pay your bills another time of the day you have to repair your car another time of the day you're relaxing and reading you, you're doing training and development and it's just not like it's not about balance necessarily it's about emphasis and mm. you have to know what that emphasis is. And for us, inside of our business, we don't want people to be covered in work and just working, 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 working and stressing, stressing themselves out. We want them to be able to, you know, go spend time with your significant other, um, go and take a trip with the kids or the parents or the, the relatives or your partner, whoever it is. Do what you need to do in order to build your life so that you will reduce stress <laughs> and your, your mental capacity will remain at a place where you are fulfilled as opposed to trying to focus on finishing all of this work because trust me no amount of work will get the work done um so you will, <laughs> you will always have work to do so you know focus on building you yeah the work will be there tomorrow i had a boss who yeah. used to say like i would i would be it was it was a job where i was putting myself through school so this would have been about the time that you it was around 08 when you were leaving yeah. uh and, and trying to build your own thing um, and I remember him saying, like, I was just like killing myself all day and, and he could recognize I was putting the work in. he goes, the work will be there tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, yeah but we got to get it done now. He goes, yes, but there's always another thing I'm going to give you. So just, and I like what you said about like, what's fulfilling to them. You got to kind of fill your cup, right? Mm. As you do things for other people and as you work your ass off, it, it's going to drain, right? You're going to empty it. You need to fill it back up again. So that seems mm. to be like, it's important to you. It's important to me. And no wonder we get along so well. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah, for real. What would you say, so all of those things are great. Those are positives and those are value-based. That's great. Mm. What would you say is, and this, this, you could answer this from a business point of view or just from a personal point of view, mm. what would you say is the biggest challenge in your life or in your business? Like what, what would you say you're struggling with right now? Yeah, my, my biggest challenge is how to expand and scale the team in a way that keeps the integrity of, of the business mm -hmm. um, intact. Um, we take a long time to get people who we like and who we want to be around us and who can produce the work. Um, and when we get them, we hold on to them for their life because those are the people that help define who we are. They expand the values because I am the primary amplification point of the related values. Mm -hmm. And people, people catch that thing, they get sight of it, and they run with it to help build the company. It takes a long time to get people to see the way I see. Um, mm -hmm. Because when you're running a business, you, you, while you want people to be individuals, they have to lock into a vision. The hardest part, the most challenging part of building a business and scaling is when you're building a business, the way we do is to find the right people and to keep the right people. And finding is, is more difficult than keeping because once you find them they mm. automatically kind of fit this they, they slip in where they need to get mm -hmm. and uh, right now we're in a position where we need more people mm. and we have we have we have too much work and too little people yeah and um and that could also destroy you yeah mm -hmm. that could destroy you too little work could destroy you too much work could destroy you and yeah. right now we're looking for people to fit that and finding the right people is not about me just putting out an advertisement saying I want employees. And that may work, 
but we really kind of search. We like to get recommendations and we like to get referrals and we like to talk to people and get to know them. And then inside of that process, we, we, we choose who we want to partner with us because it's really a partnership to build the business. And I think that's a major challenge for us right now. How can we scale and maintain the integrity of the business? That is an age old problem, my friend. How do you scale? I've heard that from, from personal brands, companies, big and small, how do you scale? Um, and it's no easy answer for sure. Um, well, thank you for sharing all these insights with me, Juma. This has been excellent. I do have a rapid fire round that I want to throw at you. Um, and you just answer these as, as quickly as you can. Sure. Um, so we're going to start. Okay. So it has nothing to do with, with like, it's mostly life stuff. So let's go with our rapid let's, fire. Let's Ready? Go. Love life stuff. Yep. Whiskey or beer. I don't drink. <laughs> He's <laughs> ruined <laughs> my rapid fire. <laughs> I don't drink, but if I had, if I had to, if I had to choose, I would probably choose beer. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, road trip or tropical destination? Oh, Road trip. This is, this is a little bit difficult for you because you live in a tropical yeah, destination. Yeah, yeah. So maybe road, you want to get out. <laughs> road trip, road trip. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how much of a nerd you are with this one. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Star Wars. Um, I love Star Trek, but Star Wars wins for me. Yeah. Regular books or ebooks? Oh, I love regular books for print. I love the smell of them. I love the feel of them. But I would buy the regular book and still listen to the audiobook for some reason. Okay, that's an audiobook. I would say ebooks, like on your Kindle or on your yeah, yeah. on your I, 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 yeah, e e yeah. ebooks. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but regular books. Let's go with regular books. Yes, I'm with you. Skydiving or swimming with sharks? I always went to the skydive. Skydiving, yeah. A team sport or just in the gym? Team sport. I I want us. Let's go team. Sailboat or speedboat? Ooh, that's a rough one. Um, I've been on sailboats. I've never been on a speedboat, so speedboats. Are you a morning bird or night owl? Night. Introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Uh, and this is the last one. I think I know this one. LinkedIn or Instagram? Oh, LinkedIn. Um, my in Instagram hasn't seen any action for the past how many months? Really? Um, oh, okay, not on there at all, huh? Yeah, I am. I am, but it's not enough to say that I'm using it properly. So, so LinkedIn okay. for sure. That's fair. That's it for my rapid fire round. And I like to ask these questions because it, it gives me, even though we had a great little chat here, it gives me even more insight, especially the uh, the sailboat or speedboat one. It depends on do you want to slow down and take your time. Or if you want to like, you know, I like wakeboarding and I like being on a powerboat and I, and I haven't done enough of either of them. Right. Um, but it sounds like you've done enough of the sailboats that you want a little bit of a change. So those are some of the questions that I like to ask, get a little bit more insight on the people. Interesting. Interesting. Psychological. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Juma Bannister, thank you so much for being with me on McGrossom Sauce. If people wanted to connect with you, where can they find you? Where do you hang out? Where should they go to talk to you? Of course, they can find me on LinkedIn. Just search my name, Juma Bannister, and you will find me. There are a few others, but I'm the red one. And um, you can always go to relatestudios.com. Our website should be updated sometime next year. And uh, just hang out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juma. I appreciate talking to you. Oh, one last thing. I'm on TikTok as well, at Juma Bannister. <laughs> well, I'll go, find, I'll go follow you there right now because I'm already with you on LinkedIn. I'll go follow you on TikTok. Nice. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. You're welcome, man. You're welcome, man. Really being here, Nick.